Coming up today on Keys to Kingdom Living. Did you know once you wake up a desire, a burning desire, did you know that that desire can very quickly turn into an addiction? <music> Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Pastor Asa Dockery. It's my privilege to be able to bring the Word of God to you. Today we're bringing you a brand new message. It's entitled, The Restraining Power of God. There's so much to this message. I want you to get out the Word of God and go with me. Let's hear what the Spirit has to say today. And when the Lord opens this Word up to, hear, to give you hearing of what He's got to say to the church, you're going to be astounded and amazed about the truths that He's bringing out today to help us understand that he has restraining power. I'll go into that in a moment. Let's look there in Hebrews, beginning with chapter 1, verse 1. God, who in various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also we, uh, he made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. You might want to underline that. Upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins and sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Now our God, the God of the Bible, has all power. There is no other power in heaven, on earth, or beneath the earth that can withstand God's power. Now, you need to get that in your spirit because there's a lot of intimidation right now from the world against the church. We're hearing about the persecution going on over in Pakistan, over in uh, uh, Uganda, how the, the world's religion is coming against the church. And we've got to understand this revelation, get it in our spirit, that God has more power, has all authority over all the powers of the enemy, and he has, through Christ, given us that same authority, and we're not to be intimidated or shut down or shut up because of our enemies that threaten us. Can I get a witness? Now, the very reason that this earth hasn't slipped into total and complete chaos and been utterly destroyed is due to the fact that God still holds the authority to rest restrain the powers of darkness. I want you to think about how chaotic things really are right now. How, di how dysfunctional America has become. How our political system has just gone awry and our government seems to be lost sight of what their purpose is. But in spite of all of that, it still works. And the reason it works is because God is still on the throne. Can I get a witness? Now, God called things into being, as he says here in Hebrews 1 and 3, and upholds those things that he called into being, uh, upholds them by the power of his mighty word. Yet, Satan has convinced millions of people that God is, is uh, out to control them. Let that sink in. Satan has convinced millions, if not billions, of people around the world that God is out to control them, that he does not want them to have a, a, a fun lie. The devil has uh, used the lust of our flesh and heart to pull us away at times from God's restraining power. He lures us away from God. Now, Satan wants folks to believe that God doesn't want them to enjoy this life. So, what does he do? He seduces them with the pleasures of this world to lure them into a trap that he might hold them without mercy in bondage. So here you are, you're, you're, you're created by God, you were formed in your mother's womb by the Lord. God has given you a purpose, he has given you protection. If you dwell on, in the secret place, you'll abide under the shadow of the Almighty, and you're there being blessed, you're there prospering, and you're there uh, doing the things of the Lord, and then you, you uh, figure out, wait a minute, I have a, an unmet desire. And I just don't feel complete. I know I'm doing God's uh, work. I know I'm being a blessing to people. I know that people uh, love me, and I know that I love people, but there's something in me that's just not being met yet. 
And so the enemy uses that unmet, taps into that unmet desire and uses it to pull you astray from God. What he's literally doing is he's pulling you away from the restraining power of God. Now, the restraining power of God isn't offered to mankind in an attempt to keep us from having a life, but to empower us to enjoy life while living in this evil and dangerous world. Now, turn with me to Romans chapter 1. Let's dig deeper into this. Romans 1, verse 16, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the what? There it is, right? The preaching of the gospel of Christ is the power of God. When, it's pre it, when the gospel is preached, it releases the power of God to do what? To save the lost. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Gentile. Now drop down to verse 21. You can read this chapter in its entirety so you can get the full context of what Paul is writing. But for, day, for today and time's sake, I want to jump down to verse 21. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. So the Bible tells us that these people that Paul is talking about, even people in today's time, they have a knowledge of God, but they didn't want to acknowledge him as God. They, they were not thankful for the things that he done, had done, so they became futile in their own thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Now, they professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore, God has gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their where? In the lust of their hearts. It's their lust is drawing them away from God. Do you see that? So God says, this lust is drawing them, so I'm going to give them up to that. In other words, I'm going to release them to do what's in their hearts to do. That's sad, isn't it? God didn't want to release them, but their will override God's will. Overrode God's will. To dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God, watch it, for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, here it comes again, God gave them up to vile passions. For even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust. There it is again. For another for one another, men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of the error that was due. And even as they did not like to retain God, and it continues on, does it not? They did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over. He gave them up. He gave them up. Now he's given them over to a reprobate or debased mind to do those, those things which are not fitting. Now, there are literally millions of people, listen to me very carefully, Millions of people today who are contemplating taking their first drink of alcohol, taking their first hit of illegal narcotics, having their, uh, an, an adulterous affair for the first time. There are millions who are contemplating stealing from their employers. Some are even considering gambling for the first time. And the list of worldly pleasures goes on and on that people today are being literally tempted and seduced by the enemy because there's a desire in them to want something that they have not gotten from God. And so the enemy is playing on them, trying to pull them out from the protection power of God and the restraining power of God that keeps back the hordes of hell from destroying us so that he can seduce us. That, that's the enemy. Now, however, in each person's heart that is contemplating committing these sins, that is considering crossing the line into sin and bondage for the pleasures of this world, Satan will tell all of them that you are in control. You can quit this at any time you desire. You can get off of this pleasure train anytime you're ready. Just go. And you control your destiny. Go ahead, take that drink. Go ahead, pop that pill. Go ahead and commit adultery. You just do it one time and you can quit anytime you want to. That's what the enemy is telling people. That's what pe uh, the enemy, Satan, is telling youth right now. 
You can handle that drink. You can handle that drug. You can handle that person. You can handle that illicit affair. What so many are blind to and will heed the leading of Satan to enter into temptation and sin is this. They realize that only God has the power to keep them from the bondage of sin. Only God has the power to keep any of us from the power and the bondage to sin. If they should desire to cross the line and sin, they are removing themselves from God's restraining power that preserves their soul and keeps their life from sin and the destruction of sin and also causes them to place their soul into bondage. The Bible tells us in Galatians 6 that if you sow to the flesh, you'll of the flesh reap corruption, decay, rot. But if you'll of the Spirit sow into the Spirit, you will of the Spirit reap life and peace. Now, you will notice in the passages we read here in Romans 1 that, people, that the people who open the door to temptation and sin we read about it there, didn't we? God gave them up. He gave them up, and they kept persisting. Finally, he says, I give you over to do what is unfitting, what is unnatural. Watch this. They opened the door to temptation, and sin didn't stop, but continued in it until God had to finally give them over to that sin. Does it sound to you like they could have stopped at any time? No. Did you know once you wake up a desire, a burning desire, did you know that that desire can very quickly turn into an addiction? They say people that take meth, take it for the first time, the highest percentage of the people that, that hit, hit meth for the first time become automatically addicted to it. A desire in an instant in one act of your will, a desire becomes an addiction that you have no control over. I thought when I took this that I could stop at any moment. All that was was a lie. It was a seduction. I thought once I had sex out of marriage, I could quit after a couple of times. Now I can't get, I can't get it out of my heart. You know why? You've awakened something inside of you, and it's burning like a fire. And it's sin. It's the power of sin this resonating today now <clears throat> they did not stop in Romans 1 but they continued in it until God finally gave them over in other words God took back his restraining force from them and said there you you have full birth to do with your life as you want in sin and what that does is it allows total destruction of their soul that's sad isn't it you and I have the freedom to walk into sin. Let me say that again. You and I have the freedom to walk into sin. But once we're in bondage, Satan has us in his power, and he will not let us go. I'm going to give you scripture. You have now checked into the, his prison, but won't be checking out of it under your own power. Turn with me to Isaiah four, uh, 14. Verse 12. I mean verse 15. No, it's 12. How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations? For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farther sides of the north. I will ascend my, uh, above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit, those who see you will gaze at you. Now this is talking about Lucifer who became Satan after the fall, right? Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners? This is scripture, y'all. He will not open the house of his prisoners. 
The Bible tells us in very plain language that once Satan gains control over a soul through the power of lust and sin, he will have no mercy on them. He won't let them out of their prison. This is Satan. He says, I've got you and I'm going to keep you and you're not going to get out. Yes, you came in of your own accord. Yes, you came under your own power into sin. But now that you're in here, you're mine. People don't understand this. Or either they're ign they don't want to know that once you go into sin, you can't just check out whenever you want to. Turn with me to Exodus 1. Beginning with verse 5. Now, for those that may not know what's going on here, God has raised up Joseph, and Joseph has had dreams from God, and, and he has also been given the ability to interpret dreams. And so God has used Joseph to interpret the Pharaoh's dream, said there's going to be seven years of plenty, and behind that there's going to be seven years of lack. There's going to be a severe famine, and you'll take the seven years of plenty stored up in big... Uh, bends and keep it uh, uh, for the next seven years when the famine comes and that will cause the uh, people to have food for the seven years of famine and because Joseph did this and obeyed and then Pharaoh that was there while as king of Egypt while Joseph was being brought up under him to uh, give the interpretation of this to not only save Egypt during the famine but to save the offspring of Jacob or Israel uh, God raises up and, and builds the empire of Egypt through the interpretation of this dream because people literally, after, during the seven years of, of famine, it gets so bad that people bring them, uh, the king and Joseph, their, their, their deeds to their property. They give everything over to uh, Egypt. They give power of a, a attorney would be what we would say today. They give everything over to control to uh Pharaoh, because they say, what good is life if you don't have food? So, so they're basically selling themselves to Egypt in order to live through these seven years. Now, we get down here to Exodus 1 and 5, and let's look at it. All those who were descendants of Jacob, or Israel, were 70 persons, for Joseph was in Egypt already. And Joseph died all his brothers, and all that generation. But the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly, multiplied, and grew exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose a king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. That is very important that, that you note that. Verse 8, there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph, and he said of his people, Joseph's people, Look, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply and it happen in the event of war that they also join our enemies and fight against us. So go up out of the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to afflict the Jews with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh supply cities, Python and Ramesses, and, but the more the, the Jews were afflicted, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were in dread of the children of Israel. So the Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor. Now, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and brick and in manner of service in the field, and all their service in which they made them serve was with rigor. It was, they were being just driven, pushed. Now, God has now used Joseph. He has told them the seven years of plenty, the seven years lack. They're, they've come now, the descendants of Jacob, into Egypt. They're living there. They're abiding there. Now the, the famine has come and gone. They're all living in Egypt. And now there arises a king that does not know Joseph, nor does he honor Joseph's memory. He does not. He chooses not to honor Joseph's memory of what he did to save literally Egypt through that, that famine. As a result, this greedy king, this evil king, if you will, 
placed the children of Israel into bondage where they remained there for over 400 years. You will notice that they walked into Egypt under their own power, right? But, but they could not leave the land of bondage whenever they pleased. It took the power of God to deliver them from bondage. Turn with me to Exodus 14. I tell you, God's Spirit is speaking to us today some very powerful uh, revelation that we need to take heed and hide in our hearts. You can go into sin under your own power, but you will not come out under your own power. Exodus 14, beginning with verse 15. God has delivered the children of Israel uh, out of Egypt. He has taken them now to the banks of the Red Sea, and there they are trapped because God has fa hardened the, uh, Pharaoh's heart. Pharaoh and his army is coming after the children of Israel, and the mountains are enclosing them. They have mountains on both sides. They have the Red Sea in front of them, and they have Pharaoh and the army behind them. They are trapped. We get down to verse 15. Let's look at it together. And the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. But lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, God says this, I indeed will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they shall follow them. So I will gain honor over Pharaoh, over all his army, over his chariots and his horsemen. Then the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained honor for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. And the, Now watch this. And the angel of God who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud went from before them and stood behind them. Now this is in the night hour, the night season, all that night long. The, the angel of the Lord went from before them, which lighted the way for them to go, now is behind Israel between them and, and, Egypt, and the Egyptians. So uh, it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. Thus it was a cloud and darkness to the one, and it gave light by night to the other, so that the one did not come near to the other all that night. What does that sound like? It sounds like the restraining power of God. God. He's brought them out of the land of bondage. Now, now Pharaoh, his army, his horsemen, his chariots, all of them are coming after them to destroy them. But the power of God comes from before them, goes behind the Jews, and protects them from the destruction of Pharaoh that's coming after them. Right? God has delivered them. Now he's going to preserve them. Isn't that good? His restraining power comes upon Israel because Israel is being moved out of the land of bondage. And he says, I am your keeper. I watch over you. I neither slumber nor sleep. Don't worry. I've got this. And he, he, he let the fire of God, literally a wall of fire, protect the Jews from the uh, Egyptians all that night. Then, then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided, and the children went through the midst of the waters, and, and God delivered them from Pharaoh and his army. Now, you will notice in this story that God used his restraining power to hold back Pharaoh, his military, so that they couldn't harm any of the Jews all that night. God had now delivered them from the land of bondage. It took God to bring them out of bondage. You can check into Sin's Hotel anytime you please, but be assured of this. You won't be able to check out when the pleasures of sin become the wages of sin. And you begin to experience death while in your sins. You remember I talked about how millions are contemplating sin right now? Their first drink, their first hit, their first affair? Well, after the pleasures of sin turns into the wages of sin and you start experiencing death, here's what that looks like in case you don't know. You become an alcoholic. You become an addict. You lose your marriage, your family, and your home. You get caught skimming off the top at work and lose your job and go to prison. I've watched Christians who have opened their hearts to Satan and sin all because they had a lust that needed to be satisfied. 
I've watched them enjoy the passing pleasures of sin for a season until their sin began to produce death in their life. Then I've watched as they struggled living their Christian life in bondage to something that they no longer had control of. But it controlled their every move. You can check in, but you can't check out without submitting to God first. Think about the people who have turned their heart on God and have given themselves over to the power of sin and Satan to control their lives. It's like someone who works to earn the trust of a mob boss. Let this sink in. They earn the trust of a mob boss and enter into a life of crime. Why would they do that? Because that life of crime will offer them everything imaginable. All the money, all the affluence, all the power, all the prestige, all the glory, all the control. They'll have everything but one thing. You know what it is? Their own life. They can't come and go as they please. They can't do as they please because they've got to answer to their boss. It's easier to get in to sin. It's easier to get into a mob family than it is to get out of it. For many, they have lost their life in order to break free from it. Wow. John chapter 8. Is this helping you today? Well, I hate to cut it short there, but we're out of time. There is so much more left of this word. It's entitled, The Restraining Power of God. If you'd like to order it and hear it in its entirety or see it on DVD, you can contact the church office. The information will be at the bottom of the screen. Also, if you have any prayer requests or prayer needs, please call the toll-free number that's available. And if you would like, you can email us, and it can get to us uh, quick that way. It's prayer at WHC North. For those that may be new to the Keys to Kingdom Living ministry, we want to invite you to go to our website. There you can find out more resources and offers that we have there, as well as our uh, core values and beliefs and tenets of faith as a ministry. We stand firmly on the Word of God, and I preach the Word of God, and use it to back up everything that's taught here. We're so glad you're a part of us. Would you let us know where you're watching us from, and, and, uh, and especially if you're new to Keys to Kingdom Living? Let us know where you're watching. It would be a great privilege to hear from you. And remember, you're in our prayers. Our announcer is coming to share more with you. So until this time next week, God bless you. We want to thank you for being a part of this television ministry. This week our special offer includes a journal, which you can use to take sermon notes or record your spiritual growth. This is a great tool that can help you see areas in your life where you've grown through God's Word being applied to your heart. Also included is a CD, Activate Your Faith. As a special bonus, we will also send you Pastor Asa's latest teaching, Addressing the Issue of Lack, entitled Breaking the Stronghold of Lack. Get the journal and the teaching on Activate Your Faith for a suggested donation of $25, and we'll include Breaking the Stronghold of Lack at no additional cost. Ask for offer number 322. Visit us on our website at whcnorth.org or contact us by phone at 706-374-6175. To write us, our address is P.O. Box 968, Morganton, Georgia, 30560. Our campus is located at 135 Bud Franklin Drive, Blairsville, Georgia, 30512.